Shalom, shalom. I greet you again from beautiful Uganda. By the way, this is the garden of our hotel. And, uh, you know, in Uganda, we have only spring, summer and fall. All three in one, the whole year. Because everything is blooming all year. Uh, fruits and flowers are on the same trees. And leaves fall down every day. We need to sweep every day. But we don't have any winter here. Also, we have mountains that are 5,000 meters high. The Robinsori Mountains, and they have even glaciers. So I would advise you to come and come and see beautiful Uganda. Now, I want to share with you another issue about discipleship. You know, we are all called. I don't care who you are, you are called. A great, a great revival preacher once said, give me five men and women or women and who love God more than anything else and hate sin more than anything else and I will change the world with them. We live in a time where this decisiveness is needed in every believer. In Ephesians 1, 18 to 28, Paul says, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called. His holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. Darlings, we are called. We are called to be ambassadors in this world with a commission that goes far beyond our personal well-being. In 2 Peter 1.10 we read, So dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and will you will never fail, fall away. In John 15, 16, it says, You did not choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask, whatever you ask for, using my name. We are here on this earth with a high calling. In Ephesians 4, 1 to 2 eight says, Therefore I, Paul writes, a prisoner of, for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other. <clears throat> Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize, for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. That is in Philippians 3, 13b to 14. Then in 2 Corinthians 5, 20. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. In Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Therefore, go. We had this already and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Dear ones, the Bible is full of promises. If you come into the orders of God, you will see how his anointing, how his grace, how his favor will surround you. We are called by the king of all kings. There's no higher calling in this universe. There are the three groups of people and there you need to listen very carefully. Three groups of people. People, the first group, people who make things happen. Second, people who watches Watch what happens. Third group, people who are surprised by what happens. Which group do you belong to? Dear ones, I read them again. The first group, 
people who make things happen. Second, people who watch what happens. The third group, people who are surprised by what happens. Which group are you in? That makes all the difference to find out in which group you are. And then in which group do you want to be? God gives you a choice. He has placed life and death before us. You and I have to decide what we want. God could have taken all bad things out of the world, but he didn't do this. Instead of this, he gave us the freedom to choose life. We are free to make decisions. Stop letting life drive you. Jesus has chosen you and you can decide to believe what the Word of God says about you. Wherever you are, at the moment in your life, you are living out the consequences of your decisions. Don't blame anybody else. Uh, you know, just the other day I read, not what we experience, but how we respond to what we experience makes us either bitter or better. The only letter that has to change is the letter I. You and I, we have the responsibility for our lives, in which direction it moves, with the choices we make. Jesus has chosen you, and you can decide, decide to believe what the Word of God says about you. Wherever you are at the moment in your life, you are living out the consequences of your decisions. If you want your life to count for God and things to change, then you must change your decisions. You cannot pray your problems away. You must change your behavior. When you were children, decisions were made for us that sometimes caused unfortunate situations. But no matter how poor, injured, and abused your life began, the important thing is how it will finish. Most people live mediocre lives. They prefer to watch what happens instead of acting themselves. You know, for example, if people mistreat you, you can get bitter, you can hate them, or you can forgive them bless them and love them and it will turn out to be a blessing for you the danger is that you the, uh, <laughs> you know what the danger is that you then think you are all, all right because other people are no different and do not act differently either you are not like other people you are chosen people you need to make a difference in this world you know, when I was invited for the first time to the German embassy in Uganda, I've never been to an embassy in my life before. And I thought, wow, this is now going to be very interesting. Whom the German government chose to be a representative of the whole nation of Germany. And I was really, really anxious to see who was coming. And after a while, a man opened the door, white hair, big stature, beautiful uh, appearance and um, as I saw this man I thought wow in the presence of this man all my problems are gone and I thought they really chose somebody that is a good representative of Germany because everybody that meets that ambassador thinks all of the other Germans are like him and I said Lord this is a good ambassador then the Lord said to me I want you to be a good ambassador for me. You know, we have a calling. You are not here to live your own life. You have been bought with a high price, with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He bought you out of your natural state of life and brought you into a supernatural state of life to be as an ambassador. And, uh, but it's important, however, to realize that we do not become excellent through our own efforts, but only because we are excellent in Christ. We come into our calling when we surrender completely to Jesus, the Lord. When we allow ourselves to be purified by Him and then make the decision, 
to be completely available to him. I promise you that will make the change in your total life. He wants to glorify himself in you and through you. Now I want to tell you, a, 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 you may laugh at that, but when uh, I was 80 years old, that's about three years ago, two and a half years ago, in the morning I had a talk with God. I said, Lord, are we going home soon? Or is there some work still to do on earth? It would be so nice if you informed me because I want to be prepared. I want to leave everything good, good, in good order. He said, Maria, everything will go much faster. Uh, you will be surprised how fast I will start moving in your life. And the whole ministry will come on a high level of international responsibility. And you will have so much joy that you can hardly take it. I said, wow, that is good, Lord. But, Lord, why do I have no relationship to that stupid figure, 80? If somebody tells me I'm five, I just believe it as, as little as I believe 80. Am I sick in my thinking? Am I not normal? What is wrong with me? I feel so young. He said, well, this is not your age. I said, but, but my birth certificate tells me. He said, well, this is reality. But what is the truth? Who is your life? And immediately it dawned on me, my life is Jesus Christ. I said, hallelujah. And it was like a flashlight. He never became older than 33. And you know what? It hit me with such an impact that I said, okay, Lord, I believe you. I believe you. If you say my life is Jesus Christ and he never got older than 33, I take this as the truth in my life. But the rest is your problem. Now I want you to reduce everything back, take the wrinkles out of my face and give me a low blood pressure. And you know what? I have a blood pressure from 94 to 64. Uh, I just had a, a problem with a, with a hip that I broke four times, but the doctor that operated me said I had bones like a 20-year-old. I have energy like crazy, and I sleep like a baby, and I'm still full with visions. I know the best is yet ahead of me. And you know what? As a man thinketh, that's how he is. Yeah? So I want to advise you, start thinking like Jesus thinks about you. You know, years ago, I had a big problem with my self-acceptance. And I said, Lord, how do you see me? And he said, read the book of Song of Songs, uh, chapter 4, verse 7. I read it and it says, you are my darling and I see no problem in you. And you know what? I said, oh Lord, but I can help you to see my problems. He said, I don't need your help. I see you with the eyes of my son, Jesus Christ. And a few months ago, I had a day where I didn't feel so good. I said, Lord, do you have an encouragement for me? He said, yes, go and clean up the room where you just put everything that you want to do later. And I thought, I don't know how that can get me some encouragement, but I do it. So I went there. And I picked up a, a, a package that was half torn. I said, oh no, what's that? I throw it away. The Lord said, open it up. So I opened up that package. It was from Germany. And out came a beautiful war curtain in blue with white letters on it. And it had uh, the Song of Songs 2-2. Like the lily amongst the thorns is my girlfriend amongst the women. And you know what? I was from zero up at hundred. And every time that I have a little low, I go to my prayer room and I read this, like the lilies amongst the thorns am I, the friend of God amongst the women. You know, we need to get encouragement from God. Let him encourage you. He's crazy about you. I would advise you now every morning to get up, look in the mirror, and say, God, you must have had a fantastic day when you created me. And then you say to this face, you see that mirror, and the best is yet ahead of you. And you will see your whole day will start on a good wavelength. Amen. Because the way we think, that's how we are. 
you don't need to run around. And I beg everyone to notice you, to bless you, to, to tell you a compliment. You can tell you the compliments God speaks about you. And he says that I had a fantastic day when I created you. Each one of us is an original of God. Each one of, of us reflects the glory of God. And please, don't compare yourself with somebody else. God only made originals. If you compare yourself, you become a copy. You know, for years, I was complaining about everything. You know, everything was too, 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 too small. Too, I mean, I just didn't like anything but my eyebrows. I liked them all my life. And then one day the Lord said, Maria, you are a rebel. I said, what? What do I do? He said, you constantly complain what I made when I made you. And I realized I was complaining. And that day I decided, if God made me the way I am, I am a wonderful original of God's creation. And even if I had been cross-eyed and had legs like this, I would have said God had a funny day when he made me, and I would have been very happy. And from that day on, I have accepted everything in my life. And then everything even became more and more like I always wanted it to be. Dear ones, relax. You are beautiful. You are a special creation of the King of Kings. And he knows exactly how he wants to glorify himself in you, with you, and through you. I love you with the love of Jesus. And here... Even the insects here in Uganda are blessing you and singing their worship song for you. I've never heard those insects to sing so loud. Hallelujah. Bless you for cooperating in this video. Shalom, shalom. I trust to see you here, there, or in the air. You remember? Jesus is coming back soon. I, can, I am expecting him every day. But I give him the choice when to come. Bless you. Love you. Shalom.